Hey guys, how we doing? So, I have a shit ton of work to do today, so this can't really be the most coolest video ever. Um, I have more plans to do better stuff, but today I just wanted to make a quick video going over a nice little topic uh, about how I think things would be under socialism. Um, I do have some better videos planned. I'm going to do a response to that um, um, Rules for Rulers video. Uh, that was really good, actually. Um, it sh that should be more, com more kind of like a, I want to say, intellectual response, if that makes sense, because it will be something other than, hey, look, guys, this guy doesn't know the definition of socialism or something, you know, something like that. I also want to do the vlog for that revolution festival. Um, it, that's ready to go, basically, but I just need to like do this one thing, which I've been putting off and I don't have time to do, but that will that will be done at some point. But for now, I just kind of want to procrastinate a bit more before I get into the work I haven't done any of. Because I only woke up like two hours ago, and it's five. Uh, and that's not because I was like out all night partying or something. I just stayed up till 7am for the sake of it, because... I guess I'm fucking mental. So yeah, today we're going to be going over uh, online surveillance and, and, and anonymity. Now these aren't topics really that discussed in leftism, I don't think, but when you come at it from a socialist perspective, I do find it quite interesting, and you come up with conclusions and analysis that no one else really does. For me, personally, I feel like the fight for online anonymity and against mass surveillance and stuff was probably the first actual political thing I got involved with. Uh, I've explained before how um, my YouTube name it com comes actually f f from the name I used when I was part like part of uh, Anonymous you know, when I was like 14. And that just kind of gives you an understanding how I've always kind of been interested in that kind of side of things, and it, it's yeah again the first political thing I did. Um, but yeah, I would just use this stupid name on like the forums and IRCs and be elite hacker and you know. <laughs> I mean, in recent years, I've become less bothered about my own privacy online. To be honest, um, I don't really know why. I just, I just, I, I, I used to be really on it. Um, now, not as much, unless I actually need privacy. I don't use it. Um, but I mean, that doesn't mean that I don't think other people should be able to, because I totally get why people would want that, even if they're not, they don't necessarily need it or you know, need it. Um, because I, I well, used to be in that same, exact same mindset, and that's not to say, oh, they'll grow out of it or something, because most people who are like that are actually older than me, so, anyway, you get my point. I mean, I actually have a Facebook account now, but honestly, that's only because I couldn't really get through uni without one. Not that I have friends for it anyway, but, <laughs> but no, I'll probably just, I, I mean, honestly, I'll probably delete that as, as soon as I come out of uni anyway, but just to give you an example that I'm kind of more normy in that general sense now. But what I really want to kind of analyse uh, in the first part of this video is why I think people feel the need to be anonymous online and why they're perfectly in their right to be. Now the general stance that people take for being anonymous online is that if uh, ever, people have every right to do that if they so choose and if they were intending to abuse that to do something illegal or well, simply making being anonymous online illegal isn't going to help if they were going to be doing something illegal in the first place. It kind of comes down to that whole social libertarian thing, or libertarian Leninist thing, <laughs> uh, um, of uh, just let people do what they want if it doesn't affect anyone else. Now, while I kind of completely agree with this argument, I do kind of want to come at it from a different perspective. I really feel like we need to look into why people want to do this, even if they're not doing uh, anything illegal, because there have to be reasons. Like most things in leftism, we're going to be analysing the root causes for why things happen in the first place. Now, of course, a lot of this is based on my own just kind of subjective experience and having spoken to people in this kind of uh, scene. So don't take it as fact, but hopefully I think it should be relatively accurate. And even if you can provide a complete list of why people do this in the first place, at the end of the day, you're always going to have that one person who simply wants to be anonymous online for the sake of being anonymous online. And you cannot change that. That's per Again, that's perfectly fine. But first off, I think one of the big, biggest reasons that people today uh, go out of their way to make themselves untraceable online is to prevent their search history or cookies or general personal information being sold off to corporations through the services that they use. People don't generally like advertisement companies being armed with such extensive information about them, so it's quite natural that they would go out of their way to prevent that. Well, why is our personal data and search history being recorded to be sold off? Well, for the same reason anything happens under capitalism, because it's profitable. I don't think we need to spend much time explaining why this wouldn't happen under socialism. There's no actual reason to do it. Now, I think the second reason 
is that a lot of people need to feel the need to protect themselves from their own governments, and rightly so. And this is even if they're not doing anything illegal. We can see from today in the US and the UK, with the likes of NSA and the GCHQ, uh, uh, there is extensive spying happening on government's own citizens, uh, or even not their own citizens, because the NSA spies on a shit ton of people that aren't American. But this spying is happening in the vague name of anti-terrorism, when everyone is fully aware that if these state apparatuses were really being used for anti-terrorism, they're going about it the completely wrong way. I mean, tell me, when was the last time you saw a terrorist advertise their next bombing on Twitter, or a drug lord sell you drugs over Facebook? Never, that just doesn't happen, but that's where they're spying on you. They're not looking into the places where they know criminals are, like the deep web. I mean, disregarding the fact they couldn't, even if they wanted to, they're not even trying, because they don't actually care about the criminals, they care about the normal everyday person. Now I know someone's going to bring up the fact that ISIS has a Twitter account, but it's kind of a different thing when they're in Syria anyway, and I think everyone's fully aware of what they're doing, <laughs> like, they're, they're not trying to hide anything. Now the reason that this is largely comes down to the way that our government is structured in its most basic form, that is, centred around the interests of the bourgeoisie. In no way is it in the interests of the working class to spy on themselves in places online where they are very unlikely to find any terrorists, or any criminals for that matter. However, it's very much in the interests of the bourgeoisie to do it because it gives them more control of their own people. Just one example of this is when people know they're being spied on, they do this thing called self-censorship. If they know someone's watching, then they're going to be, intentionally or unintentionally, uh, changing the way they speak, you, you know, changing the words they use, being more careful about the, what they say online. The state under socialism would have no reason to conduct surveillance in the same way it's doing now. It would only exist to find actual criminals, although this is kind of a different topic here, but again, actual criminals know how to hide from the fucking government. Really? There isn't a huge amount we can do apart from hope they fuck up, and granted, criminals fuck up all the time, but any real organised, uh, you know, terrorist organisation or drug ring, again, uh, so with Silk Road, they fucked up because I think it was like they used the Google capture which was linking, uh, leaking all their like, uh, leaking the guy's IP or something, something like that. Someone's gonna have a go at me for getting that all wrong, but I think that was something like that. Um, and yeah, so that, that one drug site fucked up, and then our government went in and they got them. But then, even before Silk Road was down, there were a shit ton of other sites that served the exact same purpose, and when Silk Road was taken down, there were even more. So even if, you, even, if you, if you, even if one of these sites fucks up, and you get to take it down, there are so many more that see how the first one fucked up, and then fix that. You see, there isn't really much we can do in the first place to actually fight crime with surveillance online. It's just it's just not that powerful at all. So basically my point here is that I'm not outright saying there would be no surveillance under socialism. I'm just saying right now I can't think of a reason why you would even want to use it in the first place. But if it was in the interest of the working class to use surveillance to fight crime in some way, then it would be done. I'm just saying I don't think it would be ever. Now lastly, one of the reasons that people would make themselves anonymous online is to do illegal activity. But instead of just kind of writing that off as being illegal, why don't we actually look at the activity itself? Now as I've been talking about just now, the, one of the largest um, parts of criminal activity online is drug trade. Now due to the inefficiencies of capitalism's pseudo-democracy, it's kind of difficult to get uh, something like drugs decriminalized when they very much should be. It's not inherently against capitalism, in fact it might even be profitable to do so, but in a two-party system, what party wants to become known as the drug party? Do you get what I mean? I mean, yes, we're making progress, but actually it was due to capitalism in the first place that weed was outlawed, and then from that you kind of got all the drug hysteria around all the others and blah blah blah. And again, completely different topic. I'm not saying it's impossible for all drugs to be de decriminalized under capitalism, but due to the way that capitalism works, it's just a very, very slow process that under socialism we'd just be able to go ahead and do. So in most cases for people conducting criminal activity online, in most cases they're protect them protecting themselves from laws that personally I don't even think should be laws in the first place. 
So really what I'm trying to say here is that most of the time, capitalism is the reason that people feel the need to protect and hide what they do online. Under socialism, a lot of the incentives for people to do this just wouldn't be there in the first place. But of course, going back to that original social libertarian point, if people still wanted to do it, then there's no reason why they wouldn't because they're not hurting anyone. I mean, at the end of the day, people may just want to protect themselves from other ordinary people online, and that I totally get that. I'd really like to hear actually what ANCAPs or libertarians or even just liberals who are against mass surveillance but still support capitalism think about the points I've raised here. But anyway guys, I had fun making this, I hope you guys had fun watching it, and um, I'll see you all next time, thanks for watching.